Well, hello friends and fans of Alien. Welcome back to LV426 once more. It's been a while since I reviewed Alien Romulus, but recent talk about a sequel has brought me back to the conversation. The details are understandably very scarce at this early stage in development, but that's never stopped me from reading between the lines and deep diving into the possibilities of what could be. I'm assuming you've all managed to see Romulus by now, or perhaps if you're watching this you're not too bothered about spoilers, and there will be some, just a warning. However you feel about the film, the ending is like an invitation to explore Rain and Andy's journey even further. This was made more so by Romulus's obvious tie-ins with Prometheus and Covenant. I talk of the Black Compound, now named the Prometheus Strain, as it was described by the android Rook in the film. Much like Disney Fox, Wayland yutani will not let this go, nor will they give up on it. Therefore, I doubt Romulus will be the last time we encounter this mysterious compound whose properties have the power to accelerate evolution or be utilised as a bioweapon. Always read the label, folks, and remember to consult your doctor if ingested. So, what exciting news is beginning to spark our curious imaginations about what another alien film could look like? And we may be stepping into this universe a fair amount in the coming years after Romulus box office numbers. Well, it comes from a discussion with Steve Asbell, the president of production at Disney. He said this in a conversation, We're working on a sequel idea now. We haven't quite closed our deal with Fede Alvarez, but we're going to. And he has an idea that we're working on. The two survivors, Rain and Andy, played by Kaylee Spaney and David Johnson, were real highlights of the film. And so, I think of it like, wow, where do people want to see them go next? We know there's going to be aliens, we know there's going to be great horror set pieces, but I fell in love with them both. And I want to see what their story is. Right, so there are a couple of things to consider here, and a few reasons why the sequel has the potential to be superior to Romulus. First things first, there's a lot of room in the timeline for many stories to take place comfortably. Between the events of Romulus and Aliens, we have around 37 years, give or take. The movie ended with Rain and Andy embarking on their journey to the Uvarga system, which was roughly a nine-year trip, I believe. Now, if there is one tried-and-true method of pleasing Alien fans, it's always to follow up on the character's cryosleep journeys. But don't ever leave us hanging, because when you compare the results here, and everything this movie gave us to the sheer frustration of where was David taking them, what are his intentions, and are we ever going to find out? Yes, we don't like that too much, do we? So I think a trip to Yavaga and discovering how the hell aliens make an appearance in another star system would be a great idea. With the limited information that was shared with us in Alien Romulus about what Yavaga 3 is like, it's impossible to determine what kind of story the next film will entail. We assume that it isn't a shithole unlike Jackson Star, but is that simply what the characters in Romulus wanted to believe? Supposedly, Yavaga 3 is a fully terraformed planet that exists away from the oppressive grip and corruption of Wayland yutani and their synthetics. We even see a glimpse of this world via Rain's dream sequence, which, as I interpret it, enforces the power of belief and hope over the cold truth of reality. I also find it hard to understand why this immoral company would invest in terraforming a world and then carelessly hand it over to the colonists. Here's some freebies, open borders, good luck. Yeah, I don't think so. We could be looking at a much more established colony in terms of planetary habitation and the dreaded company-based governance. But going back, I suspect after the initial outbreak on board Romulus Station, and by the way, that's a whole other movie right there that I would love to see. The company would have dispatched recovery teams and Wayland yutani special ops to clean up the mess, and primarily to retrieve their precious samples. The android Rook even stated in the film that he had sent a message back home, and that in six months the company would send a crew to Jackson Star. The sheer distance involved would obviously mean they'd arrive long after Rain and Andy had already escaped its destruction, and departed for Yvaga on board the Corbellum. So not only is it possible that Yvalga 3 could very well be a nefarious destination with its own inherent dangers, but they may also have the company's private security forces on their tail in hopes of salvaging any remnants of this priceless scientific discovery, leaving the last two survivors of Romulus very much expendable, of course. In hindsight, I still see Romulus as a solid horror and sci-fi film, but even if you remove from the equation those highly awkward throwback lines that had no business being in the movie, such as the famous get away from her you bitch remark, or even the rushed final act. 
What remains is still incredibly shy of hitting the mark left by the first two films. I mean no disrespect, but several aspects of the film took me out, and that's my opinion. I still had fun, however. What the sequel could gain from Romulus in its favour is the advantage of the audience already being familiar with the two leads, having already explored their backstory somewhat, and allowing us to establish a connection to the characters. The positive I see from this is that it will give the sequel more time to focus on telling a good story with decent pacing. That isn't just a rehash of the typical alien tropes like the xenomorph growing super fast and then inevitably getting blown out of an airlock. It's gotta be time to change that formula by now, right? Instead, suppose the sequel jumps right into the action and plot by skipping the foundational setup. In that case, the next film can explore deeper themes, complex plot twists, or new character dynamics, enhancing the story's depth and engagement, so that should be their checklist. I think most of us might agree that we'd rather finally have some answers and get to the crux of it all. As a big Alien fan myself, I find that my thoughts understandably become increasingly scattered when I try to imagine the perfect Alien film. It's like, should or shouldn't this sequel have significant connective tissue to its immediate neighbours in the timeline, meaning Alien and Aliens? Whatever path it does take, it needs to tread very carefully so as not to interfere with established events or undermine long-standing canon. Then there is the contentious matter of Ridley Scott's prequels that were left scattered to the wind, and yet, aspects of those films that were most criticised, the Black Goo for instance, have seamlessly found their way into these continued stories somehow. If Romulus was the haunted house in space experience, then its successor should be broader in scope, less contained, and more importantly, expand on popular ideas within the Alien universe. And I have to say, I had a great time replying to you amazing subscribers during the build up to Alien Romulus, as there was a lot of intellectual banter from everyone. I was surprised to discover that when it comes to the Xenomorph, it was pretty much split right down the middle regarding those of you who prefer egg morphing and self-replication over the existence of a queen. I'm more interested in learning more about that first derelict, what happened to its pilot and why it was there. But if I can't have that, then let's give Weyland Yutani some more exposure, shall we? Apart from Prometheus, the company has always played a crucial role as the hidden antagonist. But it would be refreshing if the sequel explored the company's devious methods up close, with the possibility of witnessing its special ops teams in action. I'll never forget how I felt when I first saw the Weyland Yutani Commando show up in Alien 3. As frightening as they were individually, they represented the powerful reach and might of the company just with that entrance alone. I used to imagine how things might have been different if they had been sent to LV-426 instead of the colonial marines. Or who would have been victorious if both forces faced off? I digress. So we have no idea how the story of Rain and Andy will play out, or even if Fede Alvarez will be the person directing it. But I sincerely hope that the sequel will progress in a way that allows the film to stand on its own two feet, somewhat more than Romulus did. I love and respect the insane attention to detail that Romulus incorporated into its set design, props and story. But perhaps one of its problems was that it desperately tried to please the fans who had seen every other Alien film that had come before, in attempting to be all those films at once. Every frame of the film was pure nostalgia, and sometimes that can have a detrimental effect on the experience. But who am I to criticise? I don't make films, and I can only imagine the pressure of pleasing the higher-ups while simultaneously fighting to get your vision on screen. However, there is another great suggestion or wish that many of you have expressed to me, and that is to finally bring Ripley's daughter to the big screen. It's fair to say that Alien Isolation is largely responsible for this cool idea, as not only was the game a phenomenal success in terms of game mechanics and playstyle, but it actually had a nicely thought out and respectable story arc for Amanda. It saw her pick up the trowel of her mother as she came dangerously close to her own demise in the process, all the while we learnt additional information about the events of Alien, and uncovered new secrets regarding the company's involvement. It makes me wonder, with the announcement of Alien Isolation 2, if the developers of the games and the film studio are in cahoots to merge these narratives across both mediums, wouldn't that be a fine way to go? I can see it now, Amanda Ripley makes a cameo, and then through positive feedback, gets her own movie. Other than that, I would be okay with a slightly longer runtime and a similar budget as the first film, because sometimes a higher budget can mean more interference, and we always notice those issues, don't we?
There is also some confirmation of another Alien vs Predator film in the works, with the added promise that it has an interesting new idea, and would be a change from what people would assume. If they can create something different and excitingly fresh with that sub-universe, then great, I'll watch it. But please keep this new idea from being that they've decided to incorporate the Predator universe into Alien officially. That's a big no-no for me, I'm not interested in that at all. Please let me know your expectations for the next Alien film down below, and how do you feel about Romulus now that some time has passed? Do you love it or hate it? Have your ideas about it changed? This is Entertain the Dude, signing off.